Kia and welcome to Worship at St. Mary by the Sea today. Today, in our last week of season of creation, we celebrate the rivers that God has created. Rivers rushing, crashing, tumbling, gouging. Join with us in worship. Rivers meandering, trickling, bubbling up from the depth of the earth. Join with us in worship. Rivers flowing from glaciers, chasing out to the sea feeding our lakes, sustaining our lands. Join with us in worship. May the Fiho and Panako, white bait and eel, join with us in worship. Let us join together in worship this morning. We remember and confess that we've become alienated from earth and have polluted the rivers of our garden planet. We are sorry. We have polluted our rivers with poisons. We have treated our streams as waste dumps. We've turned living waters into death traps. We've wasted precious waters in luxury living. We are sorry. We are sorry. We are sorry. Christ hears your confession from the river Jordan and forgives your sins against the river. Ezekiel 47 The man took me back to the temple where I saw a stream flowing from under the entrance. It began in the south part of the temple where it ran past the altar and continued east through the courtyard. We walked out of the temple area through the north gate and went around to the east gate. I saw the small stream of water flowing east from the south side of the gate. The man walked east, then took out his measuring stick and measured 560 yards downstream. He told me to wade through the stream there, and the water came up to my ankles. Then he measured another 560 yards downstream and told me to wade through it there. The water came up to my knees. Another 560 yards downstream, the water came up to my waist. Another 560 yards downstream, the water had become a river that could be crossed only by swimming. The man said, Ezekiel, son of man, pay attention to what you have seen. 
We walked to the riverbank where I saw dozens of trees on each side. And the man said, This water flows eastward to the Jordan River Valley and empties into the Dead Sea, where it turns the salt water into fresh water. Wherever this water flows, there'll be all kinds of animals and fish because it'll bring life and fresh water to the Dead Sea. From Engedi to Engeliram, people will fish in the sea and dry their nets along the coast. There will be as many kinds of fish in the Dead Sea as there are in the Mediterranean Sea. But the marshes along the shore will remain salty so that people can use the salt from them. Fruit trees will grow all along this river and produce fresh fruit every month. The leaves will never dry out because I'll always have water from the stream that flows from the temple and they'll be used for healing people. Revelation 22 The angel showed me a river that was crystal clear and its waters gave life. The river came from the throne where God and the Lamb were seated. And then it flowed down the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river are trees that grow a different kind of fruit each month of the year. The fruit gives life and the leaves are used as medicine to heal the nations. God's curse will no longer be on the people of that city. He and the Lamb will be seated there on their thrones, and its people will worship God and will see him face to face. God's name will be written on the foreheads of the people. Never again will night appear, and no one who lives there will ever need a lamp or the sun. The Lord God will be their light, and they will rule forever. John 21 Jesus later appeared to his disciples along the shore of Lake Tiberias. Simon Peter, Thomas the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, and the brothers James and John were there, together with two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. The others said, we will go with you. They went out in their boat, but they didn't catch a thing that night. Early on the next morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize who he was. Jesus shouted, friends, have you caught anything? No, they answered. So he told them, let your net down on the right side of the boat and you'll catch some fish. They did, and then it was so full of fish that they could not drag it up into the boat. Jesus' favorite disciple told Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon heard that it was the Lord, he put on the clothes that he had taken off while he was working. Then he jumped into the water. The boat was only about a hundred yards from shore. So the other disciples stayed in the boat and dragged in the net full of fish. When the disciples got out of the boat, they saw some bread and a charcoal fire with fish on it. Jesus told his disciples, bring some of the fish you just caught. Simon Peter got back into the boat and dragged the net to shore. In it were 153 large fish, but still the net did not rip. Jesus said, come and eat. But none of the disciples dared ask who he was. They knew he was the Lord. Jesus took the bread in his hands and gave some of it to his disciples. He did the same with the fish. This was the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from dead. Water is one of the main building blocks of life. And today we celebrate its role in creation through rivers. You know, we need water for everything. Our bodies are 50% water, and we're told that 71% of our earth is covered with water. Water is locked to our survival, yet we produce too much carbon dioxide, and this gets absorbed into the oceans and the rivers, raising the acidity, which in turn with global warming, kills off coral and other small life forms. Our living has a direct impact on creation. And in terms of water, it can have an impact at a microscopic level, which we often aren't fully aware of. Our oceans absorb and process as much carbon dioxide as our forests. So once again, if we seriously want to testify to the fact that God created us, we must also look after God's creation and the oceans and the rivers. 
In our reading from Ezekiel today, Ezekiel gives us a vision of God's unbounded grace. We heard in the Garden of Eden that Adam and Eve headed east as they left the garden. And there's this theme of heading east throughout the Old Testament, and it's often a way of saying we're heading away from God. In the vision of Ezekiel, we see God's healing river heading east. It's heading east to those who have abandoned God. So God's healing waters are flowing to those that need it most, who have abandoned God. Now, have you ever seen a dam? Have you seen the floodgates open on a dam? Uh, what did it look like? Do you remember? Maybe you've gone down a river. Now, what did the river look like as it came to an end? You know, if there's nothing backing the water up, then at the end of the river, it is narrow and shallow. It's very different to the start. So the further away from the source you get, the smaller the river gets. But the source in Ezekiel is the exact opposite of this. The further away from the source you get, the wider the river gets. And this just isn't how rivers work. Ezekiel has this vision of a tiny trickle coming out of the temple. And the further away you go, the larger the stream. This is God's grace at work. God realises that the healing stream can't get smaller as it goes further away from the temple. It needs to go wider and deeper. Because not only did the people head east, but they spread out too as they went. So this river of healing is for all people. In an earlier vision, Ezekiel has a vision of a valley of dry bones. And that valley of dry bones are the scorched and bleached bones of the elders who have died as they were carried away into captivity in Babylon. And here is Ezekiel's next vision, with God's stream of living water flowing all the way from the temple to the people in captivity, through the valley of dry bones, bringing new life. Half the struggle in the day was finding your way back to the temple. And here's an easy route to follow back to the temple, back to God and God's ways. You simply follow the river to the source. And of course, Ezekiel's vision has yet to be fulfilled. And John in Revelation has a similar vision. We wonder if John knew of Ezekiel and his vision, because there are striking similarities between the two. The temple is a source of God's river of life. And that river of life flows into creation. Both visions have a quick cycle of season, where every month the trees bear fruit. And you get the impression that the fruit are for sustenance, while the leaves, the parts you wouldn't normally use, also fulfill God's purposes. We're told they bring healing to the nations. So all of the tree is used. The healing for the nations is likely to be both for individuals and nations themselves, in that all different people come to God, and we're healed by drinking from the water and being healed with the leaves. The nations themselves are healed as whole people gather together around God. Through healing the individuals, whole nations are healed and drawn together. And then in our gospel today, we hear of the barbecue on the lakeside that draws people together. It's after the resurrection, and Jesus shares breakfast with his disciples. This assures them that he isn't a ghost, that he is real, that he calls them, he cooks for them, and then they share together. You can imagine that this would have been an absolute highlight for them. No longer is this just Jesus. But this is Jesus who is beyond any shadow of a doubt, God. He has been through death, and he's now eating with them. They would have been in amazing awe. It's here at the lakeside that we find the theme that ties our readings together today. And that is how Jesus makes all things new, how in him things are restored. The disciples' faith in Jesus was restored. 
they hadn't been abandoned. Here he was eating with them. In Jesus' defeat of death, creation has been restored, and things are brought back into a cycle of healing. John has the revelation that Jesus will be on the throne in the temple, and from the temple will flow healing and restoration. So just as Jesus made everything new, both in his relationships with his disciples, so we must restore our relationships with each other and with God. And just as Jesus made everything new with creation, just as he redeemed creation, so too must we work to ensure that the planet is looked after, and that rivers are restored, and indeed, that they become streams of healing water. Let us pray. Gracious God, your creation sustains us. Help us to live by your water of healing in harmony with each other. And when we come into contact with you, help us to make peace with each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the people who have served us as we go about our daily lives. May we continue to seek you for wisdom and discernment. We pray for those in government. May they let go of the desire for power and control and lead with humility and courage. And as the lead up to our election starts, may you help us to discern how we should vote. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us wisdom and discernment. 
We pray for those in leadership in our church. May you enable them to connect with and listen to you and your guidance. Lord, hear our prayer. Empower those who lead with grace and love. We pray for those who are sick, who are struggling with mental or physical illness, who experience loneliness, fear and grief. Lord, hear our prayer. Help us to care well for those who need it. We pray for those without homes and jobs who struggle to make ends meet. Lord, hear our prayer. Inspire us to loving action. We pray for the places in the world where peace is still hoped for. We uphold those who work at the front lines, who bring medical aid and food to those who need it. Lord, hear our prayer. Help us to work together in the way of justice and peace. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit of God, who is above all, and in all, and through all, fill you with the knowledge of God's presence in earth, and the impulse of Christ within you. Go in peace, serving Christ, and caring for the earth. Amen. We go in peace, serving Christ, and caring for the earth.